Students have a degree in engineering or science. Do you know why? There are two main reasons for this. One, generally speaking, engineers can think logically. Two, engineers are good at math. One of the major reasons I was able to get a job at Google without a computer science degree is because I am above average at math. Now I cannot teach you all the math I know in one short video. You anyway don't need most of it to become a programmer. Let me do this. I'll share five essential math skills that will get you 80% there. The rest Oh man, I am so curious at this point. Because at this point, I'm like... I just don't believe anything that's about to come out of this. I mean, I want I, I want to know. I actually am... I, I want to know what he has to say because, you know, always have an open mind going into these videos. But I just feel like I just don't believe anything. This is a little bit asmr -y. The guy is just full whispering into our ears. So just let it tantalize over your body, okay? Get tantalicious. All right, here we go. Five... Oh, man, I'm just... Most of the 20% Let him cook. You learn on the go as you encounter new problems. But why do programmers even need math? Imagine that you are a software engineer at Google and you are given a critical problem to solve. Many Google users are not able to access the web. So this is one thing I've never just enjoyed about videos in general. There's a there's a huge amount of like precursor or foreplay to the video. And I always want things to be, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I want things to be fast. Like I, I don't need to know why. I just want to hear the five. You know, I'm just that kind of person. Too much foreplay for me. Uh, you like foreplay? Some people love foreplay. Yes, yeah, some people do like foreplay. They love it. I feel like it's kind of like, I feel like the foreplay is like definitely like a halvesy here. I'm going to go 1.25. Website because of an overloaded server. This problem is getting worse with every passing minute. That's because the client side is configured to do an automatic retry after one second for every failed call. You talk to a senior engineer on the team and she recommends using exponential backup for retries. What does exponential mean? You are Boom! Taking a power. Math skill number one. Let's find out. To ask her, she points you to the documentation. If your math skills are not good, it might take you a long time to understand and implement exponential piece of the algorithm, even after reading the documentation. In the meantime, the entire internet traffic will see a huge drop because for many people, no Google means no internet. Now, if this example doesn't convince you, here is an even more important reason to learn math. Most tech companies conduct coding interviews to see if you're a good fit for the role and whether you like I would be super curious. Honestly, I, I'd be super curious. How many people right now, hey, type one in the chat if you think you're not good at math type one in the chat if you if you're just not good at math you wouldn't put yourself in like the the strong math department okay so a lot of people are in that one category all right type uh 69 in the chat if you think you're good at math if you think you're good at math type 69 Okay, so there's a lot of people. There's we're we're looking about half and half. That's what it looks like, just with my extremely scientific measurement here. Uh, all right. So follow up last question. Type 420 in the chat if you thought you were bad at math, but you understood what exponential back off was. Type 420 in there. Give me a 420. Give me a 420 if you could if you knew how to take an exponential here. Yeah. That's the thing is that. I feel like there's a level of math that you need to be good at for programming. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just going to, I might just give you my hot take here very, very soon. Uh, oh my goodness. Did you just give me a 420 binary? The man's unbelievable. Uh, Chad is trolling definitely. But I mean, the thing is, is that being good at math and extremely basic math competency, such as exponential, I don't see how that is, that is something unique or special, you know, because it's rather simple, but hold on. Let's let let's let him cook, okay? Let the man cook. Like it or not, they ask algorithmic style questions in these interviews. At the end of the interview, the interviewer usually asks you time and space complexity of your solution. In order to answer these questions and actually get the job, you need to know some basic math concepts. Many people who come from a non-CS and non-engineering backgrounds have a hard time answering these questions. That's why I've chosen the top five math skills for today, keeping these interviews in mind. Oh, now I know that, that there's a sizable number of you who pretty much hate coding interviews and don't want to go through them. And I completely respect your position. But for the vast majority of us, I actually don't mind technical interviews. My big thing about technical interviews is that there's two of them, right? There's the question in which involves a specific data structure with a specific algorithm. So find a cycle in a singly linked list, right? I hate those kind of questions. You don't really learn anything from the interviewer. Like if they didn't figure out what somebody figured out as their PhD, they don't get the job. I find those kind of interviews very stupid. 
But like some of my favorite interviews always come down to like a very specific problem that you kind of find when you're developing libraries. Uh, one of my favorite ones to ask is async request queue, which is, hey, I have a queue. It returns a promise and you have to hand it a promise factory. When they call the promise factory, your job gets to execute. The async request queue can only have up to three uh, running tasks at any one time implement it, right? There's no fancy data structures. Like you can just say, hey, I'm using an array. I know a queue would be better. But for now, we're just going to assume performance is not a big issue. We're going to use a queue or we're just going to use an array. And I go like this. Yeah, you know why you don't want to use an array, but you're using an array for simplicity. Let's go. It's a great question. It's a great solid question that has no tricks. And if you know how promises work underneath the hood, you're going to dominate it. If you don't know how promises work, it's going to be really hard for you, right? You may know how to use async await, but that doesn't mean you know how to actually use promises. And that's to me is like really, 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 really important, right? So it's like, I'm trying to find something that's like more than just some stupid got you programming. Cause I learned nothing from those other than like, how well can they learn from me under pressure while standing in front of me in front of a whiteboard? It's a stupid, it's stupid, right? You don't learn anything that way. We don't have the luxury to give up on our dreams just because we don't like one step of the process. This video is for those people. Let's learn some math. To learn the first concept, we need to start with an exercise. Here is a piece of code that contains a for loop nested inside another for loop. What is the time complexity of this code? In other words, boom. Atheist, what is the time complexity? Chat, type it out right now. What's the time complexity? It's not n squared, you dingles. It's n log n. Yeah, it's n log n. It's not n squared. You guys didn't look at this part right here. I mean, this is just crazy code, right? It's right here. J equals J times two. Yeah, you guys didn't look at it. You got to keep your eyeballs open. I know, dude. It just... I, <laughs> n log n. It's n log n. I know. You just saw two for loops and like an, any normal human being, you would have just done that actually words how many times will this code print hello world for any arbitrary value of n this video is going to be interactive so you can pause the video and leave the answer in the comments if your answer is order n square or n square times then you're going to benefit a lot from what i'm about to tell you most of the people who are everybody in the chat go watch this video okay go watch it you need to go watch it because you did not get it okay look at this you're getting the ringer right now get the hell out of here go watch the video Answer n squared do it because they confuse the code I gave you with this other piece of code. They see a nested for loop inside another and immediately conclude n squared, which is the wrong answer in this case. So I will say that this type of question, if I were to walk into an interview and this was the question, I would not only get the running time correct, I would also chastise the interviewer for this. I would. I think you should too. This is just like gotcha bullshit. Don't, don't do this. Don't like get people with like specific little little code review like got, like that's the thing is I'm not here to trick you. I want to see if you have a basic understanding. My goal as an interviewer is that I want to see do you understand programming? My goal isn't to leave little tiny bits of information that you know you may or may not see, right? Like your gut instinct to go, "Oh, that's n squared." Totally right because you looked at these two things, right? Like that's just that's normal nature this is just this is just weird programming right this is just weird it's just weird ass programming yeah the most evil part is it's not using plus plus and like if i saw that in a real interview i would be pretty upset i would i would not only get it correct i would correct them and tell them that they need to come up with a better system for trying to judge a candidate's potential not like try to trick them you know? To understand why that is, let's think from the first principles. Looking at the code, it's obvious that the outside for loop runs n times. Each time yep. this outside loop runs, we go inside and run this nested loop k times. We don't know what that k is at this time, but we'll find out shortly. So in total, we print k into n hello world statements. Now if you look at this other easier and more popular piece of code, the internal loop also runs n times. But yep. that's not the case in the code I gave you. What I want you to take away from this is that whenever you have a that happens x times, and every time a happens, b happens y times, b will happen a total of x into y times. Now to know the value of k in the last exercise, that's a good that's a good little thing right there honestly that was a good uh that was a good little way he put it honestly take that home and think about that i'm actually surprised at how like a lot of people are very weak at basic big o this is this is a really good way to put it right here 
Uh, it's it's surprising because it's not big O stuff is not that hard. You know what I mean? Y times B will happen a total of x into y times. Now to know the value of k in the last exercise, we need to know this second concept. So here is a question for you. You are given a stick that is 32 meters in length. You break it into two halves. You throw the right piece away and you break the left piece into two halves again. You throw away the right half and keep breaking the left piece until you have a stick of length one meter left. How many times did you break the stick in total? You can pause the video and leave the answer below. If you answered five, then you are right. Here is an interesting observation about the answer. If you take two, which is the total number of pieces you break the stick into every time, and if you take five, which is your final answer, and you multiply apply 2 to itself 5 times, you get 32 which is the original length of the stick. In other words, 2 to the power 5 is 32. Whenever you have an equation like this, 5 is called the logarithm of 32. Technically speaking, it's logarithm to the base 2. But in computer science, people usually think in terms of logarithm to the base 2. I was hoping for something that was a little bit more... Uh... Let's, let's go to the next section because I don't think this is very uh, exciting. I don't feel like this is very exciting. You know what I mean? The I for that, I have another question for you. How many three-digit numbers can you make by using digits 1, 2, and 3? Given that you can use each digit only once, you can pause the video and leave the answer in the comments. Mm. If you answered 6, then you are right. Classic. What if I ask the same question for nine-digit numbers using digits 1 to 9 without repetition? Can I do that one in my head? I don't know if I can do that one in my head. If we can do... I don't know the equation. I feel like I should know this equation by now. Is it just is it just nine factorial? I don't know how to do that one in, in my brainsy. Is it eight factorial or nine factorial? I can never remember if there's a minus one or not a minus one. Okay, it's nine factorial. Okay. Yeah, I can't. You know, it would take me a little bit to get there. To answer this question, you would need to know what a factorial is. Let's understand factorial using the three-digit problem. Okay, we call the first digit A, second one B, and the third one C. Right, we're gonna skip. Let's we're gonna skip out on this because I, I think we, I think we know this. I'm gonna give a real hot take at the end of this. How many three-digit numbers can you make using the digits one, two, and three? If you can use a digit more than once, I would love it's to permutations, see Permutations, right? Comments. If you go back to the example I gave you for factorials, you will see that now we have. So this is the one I, B, I can never remember how to that's do. That's why total such numbers now would be three into three into three, which is three to the power three. Mm. Yeah, that makes this sense. This is called exponentiation or exponential. Let's try to understand exponential backup based on what we know now. In the exponential backup. I don't know how I just made that jump. Exponential backup versus repeating numbers. I don't think I. I don't think I. Uh, I don't think I drew a connection there. Algorithm. You will do the first retry for a failed request after x seconds. If the request fails again, you will increase the wait time for retry by let's say two times. If the request fails one more time, you increase the wait time by two times again, and you keep doing it. If you look closely, the wait time for retrying the failed request is increasing exponentially here. Yep. Hence the name exponential back off. One of the main characteristics of something that I'm not good at math. I'm not good at math. All right, so I'm gonna give you my hot take on this one. Uh, 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 here's the thing: if you really want, I mean, all those seem like very, very basic utilization of math you don't even need to know the terms to be able to do most of that in your head common or factorial stuff i've literally never ran into a factorial problem or something that needed factorial anything in the entirety of my career uh but let's just say you do you now understand it but here's the big thing that i think would benefit every single engineer a hundred times over which is going to be some basic stats not now i'm not just talking about the average but also being able to calculate the median. Why is the median better than the average? Why should you use the median more than you should use the average? What are quantiles? If I just said, hey, give me the, give me the 10, 25, 50, 75, and 90 of the problem. Like, give me, the, give me those things. Like, why would you even know how to do that? Like, for me, that is a thousand times more useful in any, like, situation. Yeah, it's exactly, it's the outliers. It's exactly the quartiles are good outliers quantiles however whatever you know what whatever you want to call it just being able to have a larger breakdown of what's happening and how to calculate that stuff is really 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 good like having some basic understanding of distributions what's a normal distribution where do you observe a normal distribution uh what's an alpha beta di uh, distribution uh like, can you do a random number generation based on uh, a normal distribution? Why would you even want to use that? What are you using that for? Like some basic, small stat stuff. And I'm not even great at statistics. Like, I, I, I never took a class in it. I've only learned what I needed to learn on my job. But it's, it's extremely, extremely useful in a huge number of things. And so I, I find that, like, if I could recommend one piece of math understanding, it is to go and to understand distributions 
like in some basic stats. The reason being is that often you'll find yourself arguing about behaviors with other other engineers, being like, "Hey, why, uh, like, why should we implement feature X over feature Y?" Or you do like an A/B test and you have some like result of the A/B test, and now you have to make hypotheses built on the results of this because often you'll have like a multi-part A/B test, right? It's almost never just like, I mean, simple ones are like we changed the button color from blue to red. Okay. I get it. HRBs always work. Huge red buttons. But there's more complex things that take off where it's like you're actually thinking about a problem over multiple iterations. And so you're trying to derive meaning based on some things you're seeing. And so to be able to understand like kind of what's happening and to argue why things are happening, it does require a basic understanding of statistics, like even just a very basic one. We're talking about you don't even need to be able to pass like, you know, statistics, statistics 101. Just even like Week one statistics 101, you'll be doing pretty dang good, honestly. And so I just find that uh, that is like one of the most missing set of skills. And it was missing for me too, very, very much so. It was missing for me and I really needed it. And I found that it has only helped me in almost every part of my career knowing that. And so five math skills I think programmers need could be just, I mean, honestly, the guy, he, he produced a very well- you know, build video. It's obviously targeted towards uh, very beginners. I think it's a really good video. He did a great job. But, uh, you know, real talk, as someone who's been in it for quite some time, the only skill you need is basic stats understanding. Invest in that. Linear algebra is great, but I don't think you're going to run into a lot of linear algebra, right? You're just not. You're, I, I just, I have... I have never ran into it, but I also didn't do game programming. So if you're doing game programming, you obviously don't have a little bit of math, okay? You're going to have a shit ton of math. And so if you do something that the average web developer, the average application developer will never, ever, ever run into, learn some stats. If you're going to be doing anything to do with graphics, learn the shit out of linear algebra. You're going to learn Green's theorem, go into multi-vector or multi uh, um, um Gosh, what is it called? Multi-derivative calculus. Uh, you got to learn all that crap. You better be good at it. Laplace transforms better be your better be your jam. 